Welcome back to the AI Minds podcast. This is a podcast where we explore the companies of tomorrow built AI first. I am your host, Dimitrios, and this episode, like every other episode, is brought to you by DeepGram, the number one text to speech and speech to text API on the internet today, trusted by the world's top conversational AI leaders, startups, and enterprises like Spotify, Twilio, NASA, and Citibank. We are joined today by my man, Richard, the co-founder and CEO of Row AI, an unstructured data analytics platform. How you doing, Richard? Doing great. Thanks for having me, Demetrios. So you grew up in China. You came to the U.S. when you started doing your undergrad at UC Berkeley, but your dad was an entrepreneur himself. What did you take away? I understand that he was always dealing with Americans when he was doing business. So you learned business at a young age and osmosis. What were some of the things that you were learning? So he started trading. He owns a trading company. He started trading with um, the metal parts, the um, iron steels with Americans uh, since 1995. Back then, internet was just become a thing. E-commerce would just become a thing, right? So all he was doing is sitting in front of his computer and start sending outbound emails. Probably, I, th I think at that time, outbound email effective rate is like 100 times more than this, this is today. But uh, I think I, what I learned from him is that spirit of being a startup founder, going from scratch from zero to, to one, that spirit really encourages me. Mm. He had that hustle. And yes. it probably helped that, yeah, sending outbound emails was like shooting fish out of a barrel. <laughs> so you were at UC Berkeley, you graduated, you went on to work at LinkedIn as your first job working on recommender systems for the recruiting services. And as I understand it, you grew in your job there, but you felt like it wasn't enough. What made you want to transition out and go start a new adventure? So I had a great time at uh, LinkedIn and it's my first job after I graduated. And I honestly learned a ton from the people around me. Um, um, and, uh, you know, especially at a later point, my, the people around me at LinkedIn all become the entrepreneurs themselves. So that gives me an, an impulse, like a really strong impulse for going out of the world, go, going out of, on an outer world. I know it's, I'm very comfortable at LinkedIn and I'm doing my best. Um, and I believe uh, I'll be even going higher uh, if I stay at LinkedIn. But I think it's just that impulsive change that makes me to, you know, go into some other places, maybe a faster moving place and try out something uh, more adventurous, right? That makes me push to go join, uh, join Snowflake and which is one of the most fast growing, uh, you know, data warehouse uh, uh, company in the world. Is it? So there's a fun story about you at Snowflake and something you created in a hackathon turned into an excuse for you to go and talk with 30 VPs. Give me that story. So, yeah. So uh, I joined Snowflake in 2022, October. And by the time I joined, it was probably at the dawn of ChatGPT coming out. You know, one, one weekend, I always remember it was a uh, winter cold winter in Bay Area, right? I did not do anything, but uh, I was just, one idea came to my mind is why not we build something, ch some chat GPT for a snowflake. And that was, I think it was December 2022. So I built it in a weekend. I, uh, I thought I should, uh, you know, not be the only one who can use it. So I presented to my skip manager. Um, she really liked it. I think she gave me the, that, that first uh, burning fuel into and what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, she encouraged me to keep pushing it and even referred me to her boss. So after a couple of weeks, you know, do some tweaks to my uh, little prototype, present to her boss. Turns out he really liked it as well. Right? And he referred me to uh, 
his boss as well. And that is the SVP of, uh, of Snowflake, SVP engineer of Snowflake. So we organized a big meeting. I was probably like, you know, 20, 30 people sitting in a, in a room. Uh, and I was sitting at the edge of that short edge of that long table, giving a presentation. Uh, and that, I remember that was the first time that I got a stomach pain after I delivered the speech. That was so nerve. That was a nerve pain because I was so nervous. Um, but, uh, and I'll remember was that people start to discussing after, before the like 10 minutes or like five minutes before, uh, my, my, uh, demo finishes, I can tell how people are excited about it. And, and later that, uh, uh, that demo turned into a very actionable sprints all the way to like from, from February, all the way to the, uh, Snowflake summit in 2023 in June in Las Vegas. So we worked, we crushed that that four month brain multiple teams together within Snowflake, including Streamlit, including um, native app, and including our partners like uh, like Cybersyn, which did data, uh, produce high quality data, um, uh, even Lanchain to build some help, you know, build some part of the ecosystem. And we kind of delivered a massive talk in, uh, in June uh, and show the world like, how can you integrate the general AI within your Snowflake data warehouse. That was a big blast. So that I'm clear and for everybody else, let me see if I understand correctly because Snowflake is a data warehouse. So you put in structured data or you put in Excel spreadsheets with a lot of numbers and columns and rows and all that fun stuff. So it's, it's structured and what you created in this weekend is the ability to talk to it in natural language. So you no longer need to use this programming language, which is probably SQL, I would imagine. Some people might use Python. Can you use Python? Yeah. So the idea is that you no longer need to worry about any of that. If you don't know how to program in SQL, you're all good. Just say what you want from the data warehouse and Snowflake is going to be able to now understand that and retrieve it for you. Is that what you hacked together? That's exactly correct. Yeah. What, what I hacked together was uh, exactly that. But, uh, you know, also um, uh, it's like a command. It's like a natural language as a command line for, for Snowflake. It could write the SQL query, execute the SQL query, retrieve the data together, uh, retrieve the data back, and and not only that, you can also tell Snowflake to um, create a like worksheet. You know, create a new dashboard. So that was a, that was kind of the just use natural 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 language on everything kind of concept, hackathon I did. Ah, I see. So there was actions that you could take. It wasn't just hey, give me this data or how many sales have we made. It was all right. I want to know how many sales we made, and now I want to know let's put all these sales of the different branches of our company into a new database or a new worksheet or whatever it may be so that I can get a better idea of sales across the organization or whatever your use case is. You no longer needed the SQL mastery. And sometimes people have to lean on their data teams in order to get that information or if they want dashboards or if they want to update things, they have to ask a data engineer or a data analyst, and you were able to help empower the non-technical users to get in there and get their hands dirty with the data. On the technical level, it was just the chat GPT call. Was that what you were doing there? And then integrate a lot of integrations with Snowflake. For, so when you would, and probably a lot of, a lot of regex in case <laughs> something. Yeah. You yeah, had yeah. Stuff hard coded. I think you're spot on, Dimitri. I'll say. I remember that was uh, that was like late 2022. It's we only have GPT three, right? Yes. We don't have a JSON uh, rigid output. Yeah, no. Uh, so we, the line chain asking. ecosystem is not. It's not even built that uh, like built yet. Uh, we don't have Streamlit as an interface to to talk, right? So I got to build all those components together into. I remember that was I used uh, uh, GCPs. Uh, you know, as a backend, essentially, I literally hosted in on a little like fi like uh, Firebase, 
um, uh, a database and, and Firebase frontend. So that was fun. So I put together the chat interface. Uh, I, uh, I, I do leveraged a little bit of a React kind of agent uh, it? paradigm in Lanchain back then. It was very early for them as well. So need to do a lot of uh, uh, regex, of course, uh, to make sure the output is uh, program programmable by the computer. Um, but yeah, that was all it takes. And you gave this talk at the Snowflake Summit, which has tens of thousands of people. You said your stomach hurt when you were presenting for the v VPs. Was your stomach hurting again when you gave the talk in front of all those people? My hands get cold. I don't think I got another stock booking. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my edge line was so high at that moment when I start like literally, um, uh, uh, you know, start, well, before I start presenting, get onto the podium. Oh, I remember there was a guy, I forgot his name, but he was like holding, like holding my fist. That was the first time I heard, I, his fist is so warm and that gives me a sense of calm. Like about like 10 seconds before I go to the podium. Hold my fist for like five seconds and close your eyes. Deep breath. And here you go. Yeah, and welcome to the podium. I see the big counter uh, where audience could not see it. That is gonna count, start counting down from like 10 or 15 minutes. And I started my, I, it's a live like programming session as well. So I have to talk um. while I program. <laughs> you are brave to try and live demo in front of all those people. That is uh, incredible. So now, you could have been great there. The Snowflake decided to invest a lot of money into Gen AI. It seems like you were really leading the organization to help them think about it differently. Why didn't you just stay? I think, you know, Snowflake is probably for, for everyone, is probably one of the best places to innovate uh, if you want, especially if you want to build gen, general AI. Um, and, and I think it'll keep, keep being so for the next five years at least five to 10 years. And um, we buy a lot of GPUs. We buy, uh, we, we uh, hired the best team in the world, including the team from uh, you know, Neva and DeepSpeed, uh, which has one of the, arguably one of the best researchers on the AI domain. Hey. So I think, and if I stay there, you know, uh, I believe I'll keep pushing it, just how I, how I did at uh, our LinkedIn. But I think the reason I came out is that the seed of building a startup has always embedded in my in my chest, and I think what uh, what ends up pushing me is I saw an even bigger future for the unstructured data. So as many and many many people, many uh, data practitioners know, Snowflake or in general data warehouse, data lake houses, including Databricks, uh, are a place for are mostly a place for the structured data, right? We talk, we talk, we talk about Delta Lake, we talk about Iceberg, Parkit files all the time, but at the end, they are just like more fancy CSV files with more time travel and more compressions, right? But uh, if we're talking about unstructured data, what does it mean to to people, right? Like human, as an, as human, we see, we process unstructured data all the time. We process like 74 gigabytes of unstructured data according to a report. Those are, uh, the information processed through our eyes and through our noses and ears. But uh, computer could not process them because computer processed one and zero uh, at, the, at, its, at its best. But LM transformer-based model came out. All of the data in front of him is just like tokens, including a picture. It's a token. It's one and a zero for the transformer models. And see, I see a bright future where data teams can can now process, can now have the have that extended like eyes and ears, just like human, and they can process all kinds of unstructured data that they were not able to in the last decades. Then I decided to do something. Well, I guess do something uh, to get skin in the game is at least uh, you know do it full time. Uh, we applied to Y Combinator together with my uh, good friend in UC Berkeley, Jason. And uh, we got in, fortunately. So that becomes the, the last uh, last pull uh, out of the company. You know, we decided to to quit our job full time, uh, cut that hand, a golden handcuff, uh, and uh, you know, start something new. 
it's incredible because I'm sure they were enticing you with all these in, these great teams, all these GPUs, all this freedom to do whatever you needed to do, and you still had the conviction to say, I got to go and try this on my own. And so now that gives me a clear picture of what the inspiration was, but what is the pain that you're trying to solve with the new product? If I were to talk about one thing, it was about the simplicity of processing that structured data. And I think I've talked to one of the best data engineering voices in the, in the, in the, uh, in the field, right? I asked him, like, what do you think is the best, like, is the, uh, what do you think is the reason where, you know, uh, data people don't process on structured data? And what, what is the future you see? And I think he is seeing the similar, seeing the similar thing that I, I do, which is there's just simply no easy way for them to process, even in the general AI, right? If you go into a data uh, analyst and ask them, like, you know, write your own prompt, grab your data from S3 bucket, and you don't, he, like, she, he or she does not even know where the data are, right? The S3 data on structure are so far from what they can reach. And the current data stack is not optimized for the unstructured data. For example, you could not even visualize the data in the any data warehouse data, like house product today. You cannot see a video. If you cannot see the video, then you cannot trust what you get from the LM. And all of the data processing you're we're doing today is still needs some manual wiring. Like getting the data from S3 bucket, shovel it into a large vision model, do some post processing, convert it into uh, into some some newer like metadata and putting it to a new uh, upload it into my uh, ETL into my data warehouse. There's a long uh, there's a long chain of data processing. So and I try to our vision is we want to bring the extreme simplicity as uh, uh, like uh, as how Snowflake solved it like try to solve it in fi 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Data analyst. Does not, does not need to, to, to learn about uh, anything about, um, you know, how they're, like, ha like how their unstructured data is stored. How do they pull out from the bucket? How do you scale it? All they need to do is come in to raw AI um, and start writing SQL queries to transform, to query and transform their unstructured data with AI models in SQL. And do you see it being something, because I, I find this question or what you said fascinating where the data is so far away from folks when it's in an S3 bucket and an S3 bucket is basically like a catch-all. So data comes in from all these different sources that you have at your company. It could be internal data or in, things that maybe like HR is generating or it could be external data, it could be website data, like click events, could be contracts, whatever it may be, it can get thrown all into S3. And this is a catch-all. It can be training videos too, if we're talking about all of the different ways that you can get unstructured data. Could also be podcasts like this one. There's many different ways that you can get that. And a data analyst usually when they're touching data, they'll get the data and it'll be filtered through a few different steps, like you mentioned, and it will usually go through, it will come out of this S3 bucket or the catch-all where all the data lives and it just sits there and you'll pull, you don't pull all of the data, you just pull the relevant data or what you hope is the relevant data and then you pull it into some kind of a database that's optimized ideally for your use case. Is that how you see yourself living and, and coexisting with S3? So it's, all right, we are optimizing, but it doesn't mean that everything's going to us directly. You're still going to have that S3. It's just going to be a lot easier for us to integrate with this big bucket of data and get you what you need. So at the end of the day, you're helping these data people live closer to the data and be more intimate with it. Exactly. I think 
Dimitrios who are capturing, uh, uh, the, the way we, d we do it is like, you can imagine like row is like an Athlete plugin, essentially. It's a Chrome, like a Chrome plugin, right? You could immediately, uh, once you connect it to us to F3, right? You can immediately get a interface where you can start processing those data, raw data from F3 into something that uh, you are uh, you can um, quantitatively analyze. And not only S3, right? Uh, we also try to, we, 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 that extends to all of the bucket storages, including Snowflake internal staging. Hey. Uh, we're going to be a Snowflake native app as well. So that taps directly into Snowflake's uh, uh, internal staging, which is also another S3, essentially, within Snowflake. Or Databricks Volume. Those are all the places that we can tap into that uh, uh, that we can be uh, an OS system, operating system on top of those data. Beyond that, you mentioned about public internet. For a lot of uh, companies, right, internet has a very cute attribute, which is it's always refreshing. So uh, we see companies don't always kind of persist those <coughs> internet data because by the time you analyze it, it's probably like stale. So what we have, we also have a crawler that allows uh, allows people to crawl the web pages live into an image or into a lawn, like into HTML. And then that can be further like processed with um, with uh, with uh, with the uh, LM as data processors, and they don't need to build a crawler themselves uh, on a in a side hustle. They can just like do it on on roll with SQL. That's super cool. So now the idea is what the the end state that you're going for, and really what you're trying to do is empower those data analysts and data engineers to better work with the data? That's right. And, and what are some use cases you've been seeing? Yeah, so talking about the web pages, one use case is competitor analysis or simply merchant, uh, merchant understand, merchant KYC. For example, if a company wants to serve better uh, for their clients, the one of the most, one of the best information source is their landing pages. Right, what they're selling, how they're selling, how they're selling it, and um, so that uh, the company can better curate different features for that for their client. And if you flipped around, right, you can also look at your competitors' landing pages. You know, see uh, what are they selling, right? Do they have uh, any promotional events? When it comes down to the enterprise operational data like uh like going calls right like uh slack messages or meeting transcripts like what are uh, that, that what are doing right we use uh we want to we're seeing a pain point where the default summarization tool is not enough essentially uh from going calls or from like uh, i use read.ai we want to do it in a customized way right because as a ceo for example i do a lot of prospects calls as a CTO, my CTO Jason, he does a lot of engineering calls. We care about different things. But uh, uh, today, how we're solving it is like we just import all of those trans meeting transcripts data into our own data tool and start use different uh, LLMs to process, extract different insights from those transcripts at scale. So I care about uh, the top pain point, the willingness to pay. My CTO cares about uh, the blockers for why why are uh, gonna need another week for a certain feature, so we we can now we can extract different things from this uh, different insights in our ERP. Incredible. Well, man, I'm very excited about what you're doing. I appreciate you coming on here and chatting with me about this. And I'm going to go and play around with Row AI. It sounds like it is a really cool tool. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Dimitrios. Asking great questions. <laughs>